guys welcome back to the crafty yarn barn my name is nancy ellen and the project that we're doing this week is a baby blanket isn't this precious it's a v-stitch double crochet pattern and i'm so excited to be able to do this project this week there's somebody at my church that's going to have a baby so i decided to share with you how to make this beautiful little precious baby blanket materials that we're going to need to make our project today. I'm really excited about making this blanket. I found this really pretty yarn. It's the Yarnspirations Bernat Blanket Brights. I love this blue colors. It's a variegated yarn. And let's look at the details on it. The color on it is water slide variegated. It's a super bulky six yarn. It calls for a size L11 hook, eight millimeter hook. The yardage on this skein is 108 yards. I could only find these smaller skeins, so I had to buy seven of these. We're gonna need approximately a total of between 850 to 900 yards of yarn in order to make this little baby blanket. Just keep that in mind when you buy your yarn of how much yards you're gonna need. Sometimes you can find the bigger skeins, the real large ones, but the, I can only find these small. So I've got that, and I've got the Bernat Baby Blanket yarn. This is a white yarn, and it's the same, Super Bulky 6, same hook that it requires, the L11 8mm hook. This skein is the Baby Blanket skein, and it only holds 72 yards of yarn. So just be aware of the amount of yarn that's in your skein, and keep it around 850 to 900 yards and you should be totally fine in making this blanket that we're going to make today. I also have my Fisker scissors. Love these scissors y'all. Oops. A little clumsy. Love these scissors. They've got the spring in them so they open and close easily and they've got the lock. Love these crafting scissors. I love them for sewing as well as for crochet all my crafts. I don't cut any paper or anything with them. I only cut material or yarn. I got my boy 11 hook and I found these. I'm so excited. I found these plastic yarn needles. Look how big they are. They've got the bigger eye on them and it looks like it's going to make it really easy to sew in our yarn tails if we need to because of how large the hook is with a larger eye. Be able to thread that easy. Love it. Love it. Love it. I was so excited when I saw that hanging on the the rack there down in the comment section y'all check that out i'll have listing for all of these items in case you want to purchase those but i was super excited about finding these bigger yarn needles and my row markers love row markers i always use them when i make washcloths blankets afghans scarves anything i want to keep a straight edge to i love using these because it keeps me from having to count my stitches and keep track of where I'm at and always know where my last stitch goes and how, where to make that turn when I do my, my projects. I can't get enough of these row markers. But if you don't have row markers, don't worry. In order to get away with not having row markers, you can use safety pins, a little piece of yarn you can tie in there. So no big deal. You can still do fine without row markers, but I love them. So if you go online to buy these big plastic yarn needles, buy you some row markers. Um, there's only, they're only a couple bucks, so you know, two or three dollars for a pack, and same with these yarn needles. They're not very expensive at all, y'all, so, but anyway, love those. So let's go ahead and get started and get to making our blanket. First, we're gonna do our slip knot, and I like to leave a pretty good sized tail, about six to eight inches long. So we're gonna leave our tail on here, and we're going to go ahead and make our slip knot, wrap it around our fingers and stick it through the back. Grab a hold of that loop, hold on to your tail, hold on to your string, and pull it tight. Now you can put that onto your crochet hook. If you grab your tail and you pull your tail, it should tighten up right onto your crochet hook. For the baby blanket that we're making, we're gonna use the V-stitch pattern using double crochet. In order to make our foundation chain, we need to use a multiple of two plus two additional stitches. So any number that is a multiple of two, you can chain that amount 
and add two additional stitches and you can use this V stitch pattern for any project that you're working on as long as you make the correct number of foundation chains. So our, for our baby blanket we're going to chain 68 plus two additional stitches will make 70 chains for our foundation. So let's go ahead and get started with the chain. You're going to yarn over, put your hook behind the yarn, turn your hook, and pull it through that slip knot. And that's chain one. Now you're going to yarn over, go underneath, turn your hook, and it gets that yarn hooked right there on your crochet hook. Pull that yarn through the loop that's on your crochet hook, and that's chain two. Yarn over and pull it through, that's chain three. So you're going to go on all the way until you chain 68 plus 2 so that's a total of 70 chains so go ahead and proceed and I'll see you when you get to the end of your foundation chain of 70 chains and now I've chained 70 what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and put my first row marker onto my project and I want you to look really closely. It's going to be a little bit hard with this yarn because of how fuzzy it is. And this is the last chain that I did. There's a V. If you can tell, there's a piece of yarn coming this way and this way. It makes a V. If you turn it over and look at the back, it's kind of hard, you're hard to tell. But there's one loop and then you see two up front. We're going to put our stitch marker right on that last chain right next to the hook. We're going to put it through that first loop on that side and then again right here and fasten it on. And when we come back the other way, we're about to start row one. When we come back on row two, right there is where our last stitch will be on that row two. Now we're ready to start our V stitch pattern. Now we're going to turn and make row one. You're going to double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. So this is the first, second, third, fourth. Into the fourth chain from the hook, you're going to do a double crochet. So you're going to yarn over, put your hook into that foundation chain, yarn over, pull it through, and you're going to have three loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and pull it through the first two loops. Then you're going to yarn over and pull it through the next two loops on your hook and end with only one loop on your crochet hook. You're going to do another double crochet into that same foundation chain that you just made your double crochet. So two double crochets into the fourth chain from the hook. And that is your first V of your V stitch pattern. Now you're going to skip the next chain on your foundation and into the very next chain you're going to make two more double crochets. Yarn over, put it through the foundation chain, pull it through, yarn over and pull it through the first two loops and then yarn over and pull it through the second two loops. Two double crochets into that same foundation chain. And that's your second V of your pattern. You're going to skip the next foundation chain and go into the very next one after that. Two more double crochets into the same chain. And you're going to continue that pattern all the way down to the very end. And I'm going to show you how to make your turn. So skip a chain and then two double crochets into the next chain. Skip a chain and then two double crochets into the next chain. The two double crochets paired together is your V stitch. So I'll see you at the end of row one and show you how to make the turn. Okay, I'm down to my last two chains on my foundation. I'm going to skip the chain and into my last chain of my foundation row, I'm going to do one double crochet. We've been doing pairs of two all along. Now we're going to do one double crochet into the very last chain on your foundation row. It gets a little awkward sometimes when you're doing that first row on your foundation. So you just got to work through it. Okay, now we finished our first row. Now we're going to make our turn. We're going to go back the other way, but before we do, we need to chain three. One, two, three. And this will be our post on the very end of row two. 
Now we're going to make two double crochets, a pair of them, into the space of the row before. You're not going to do it at the top of the stitch here. You're going to actually go in between the space of the double crochet on the row beneath. So we're going to yarn over and we're going to put our hook through the space between those two double crochets and we're going to put two double crochets there in that space. At the very top of that chain three that we did for our post on the end, I'm going to mark that so I know where to do my last stitch when I come back the other way. So on the top of the chain three post that I made, I'm going to put my yarn marker in there and mark it. So that's where I'll make my last stitch when I come back the other way on row three. Now you're going to continue on and you do your next pair of double crochets into the space of the V-stitch on the row beneath. So yarn over, go into that space, and you're going to put two double crochets. And this is going to be such a quick, easy pattern to memorize, and this blanket's really going to come together quickly. And go to the next space. You can fill it with your fingers easily while you're watching TV and this blanket will just really crochet up quick. Now see how the pattern's starting to look? You've got your pair of double crochets, your V-stitch, and then right above it your V-stitch, your pair of double crochets right into the space of the row beneath. So go ahead and do that all the way down and I'll see you at the end to show you how to turn your work. Now we're at the end of row two. I've double crocheted two pair in that last space from the prior row. Now we're going to do our last stitch on row two. To finish off the row, we're going to go in the top of that chain space from where we did our turn on the prior row. It was actually number 70 on our foundation row. That's where we're going to do our last double crochet for row two. So I've got my fingers there. I'm going to yarn over and put that hook right through where I removed that yarn marker. Yarn over and pull it through and do my double crochet. Now I'm going to turn my work and start row three going back the other way. So I'm going to chain three, chain one, two, three. Now I'm going to mark the top of that chain three space here because when we come back the other way on row four, this is where we'll do our last double crochet of that row. So it's marked. Now we're going to continue on our same pattern with two double crochet pairs into the space of the V-stitch on the prior row all the way down. I'll see you at the end to show you how to make the turn. I just did the last double crochet pair into the space of the V-stitch on the row before. All I have left now is the chain three post on the end. I'm going to remove my yarn marker and right there where I'm taking that yarn marker out, that's where I'm going to do this the very last double crochet into that space. So one double crochet Now I turn my work and you're going to chain three and continue on. The same stitch pattern as the row prior. Check the comments section down below and I'll give you a written pattern instructions for the V-stitch and I'll give you a link to another video that I did a in-depth tutorial on for the V-stitch pattern. So you're going to continue on for the length of your project. I've finished 52 rows of my V-stitch pattern. I believe my baby blanket, the body of the blanket is done now. So I'm going to fasten off this end where I've finished the row. Pull out some yarn, maybe about six to eight inches long, and I'm going to cut it off from my skein, and I'm going to fasten off my work. So I'm going to yarn over and pull that yarn through the loop on my hook, pull it all the way through, Grab hold of that tail and pull it tight. And that fastens off the end of the work there. Now let's go ahead and get ready to put your border on. I'm going to put a row of single crochet all the way around my blanket. I'm going to put it all in white. 
I want to do that so it'd be easy for you to see how to do the border. Then I'm going to finish off the rest of my yarn that I have and do a couple of rows around with the variegated yarn. I think that'd be a pretty combination between the white and the variegated. So let's get started in getting our border put on our blanket. Okay, find the right side of your blanket and you wanna put that side facing you. The right side means the side that you see the pattern on really well. The opposite side doesn't look as nice and finished as the right side does. That's the side that you want to crochet towards you starting out and putting the border on because you want that finish to look nice and neat and consistent throughout. Also, when I start my borders, I don't start them on the corners. That is considered sort of a weak spot. If you're starting your border there, when you come all the way around and you join them together, you don't want that to be at a weak spot. This is where we ended our blanket for the body, that row, and fastened it off. So let's go ahead and start a little bit further down, maybe about a fourth of a way down on the top row there. What we're going to do is we're going to do a slip knot. Find the very top of that double crochet stitch where you want to start and stick your hook through there. Then you're going to grab a hold of that slip stitch and pull it through. Go ahead and pull that tail all the way through and tighten that up on your hook. So you're going to have that string of yarn pulled through the top of that loop there. And we have our slip stitch on this side. Now we're going to yarn over and pull our hook through the loop and that created a chain. We chained one. Now we're going to go ahead and single crochet into the next stitch on our row. Unlike before where we were going into the spaces, here we're on our top row so we're going to go right into the top of each stitch and do a single crochet. So stick your hook through the loop yarn over and pull it through, yarn over and pull it through both loops on your hook, and that's a single crochet. Go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull it through, you have two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull it through both loops. And you're gonna do that all the way down to the corner. When you get to the corner, I want you to pause there, and I will show you how to do the corner stitches to make the turn to go down the other side. Here we're to our corner. And I've got that tail hanging here, see? When we come around this corner, we're going to actually hold this tail to the edge of our work, and we're going to crochet around it, just as if it was a part of that body of that blanket. And we're going to crochet in those stitches, and when we finish, we're going to have this tail hidden in our work. We're not even going to see it. So we're at our corner, three single crochets into that next stitch on your top row. One of the single crochets is going to be on the top when we work it around. The second single crochet, it's going to look like it's the part of the corner. And this third is going to be part of our turn there. So it's going to make its way right around the edge, edging of that blanket. Now we're on the side of our blanket. So we don't have those nice, neat stitches where we can crochet into. On the side, we have where we have our chain three and our double crochet stitching. So into each of those spaces we're going to do two single crochets into each of the spaces right down the edge of our blanket. And remember you're going to hold your tail with your blanket here and you're going to crochet around it. So we need to do two single crochets holding your tail on the blanket into that space. Hold your tail there and do two single crochets. Go to the next space and you're going to do two more. And you're going to do that all the way down the edge of your blanket. And at the next corner, you're going to do three single crochets into that corner. And continue on all the way around. When you get back all the way around to the other side and you meet up, When you come back all the way around and you meet up here, I want you to stop and I'll show you how to join your work. Okay, I made it all the way around. 
Here's my yarn tail from the very beginning. I'm just going to lay this over to the side. I have did a single crochet in the very last stitch. The next stitch is where we started. So I'm going to do a slip stitch right at the very top of that first stitch on that border row. And that joins your border all the way around. Now, if you want to go around again, if you have enough yarn, you can make another round of single crochet all the way around. It'll be super easy to do that because you just go into the very top of each stitch of your single crochet border. And when you get to that corner piece, in the very corner, you would do three to make your turn around the corners. I'm going to go ahead and do another row of single crochet all the way around. And to do that, you would chain one, then you would go right into the base where you did your connection and do a single crochet there. You would hold this tail along the top of your blanket and when you go into the next stitch you would just crochet right around that tail and crochet it into your work. And Once you crochet down about four or five inches or so you can cut the end of that tail off and it'll be hidden right into your border work. I'm going to go ahead and go around one more time with my white and I'll meet you back in just a few minutes. Okay, I finished my white border around. Now I'm going to go back to my variegated blue and I'm going to do a single crochet all the way around to finish that off. I personally don't want to leave the white as my end border because it's going to get so dirty and dingy with fingers touching it, little hands touching it. So I don't want to leave white as my border. So we're going to do it the same exact way as we added the white. I'm going to do a quick slip knot. And I'm going to put my hook through one of the loops, grab that slip knot, and I'm going to pull it all the way through along with that tail. All right, tighten that up onto your hook. And you've got that yarn pulled through your border with your slip knot on your hook on this side with your yarn skein on the other side. That way what we're going to do is we're going to yarn over and pull that yarn through that loop and that gives us one chain. Do a single crochet into every stitch all the way around and finish off our blanket. And when you get all the way back around, we'll fasten off our work and sew in the tail of our yarn to finish our blanket. I'll see you back here in just a few minutes. All right, I made it back all the way around with my border. What I finally decided to do, I made two rows of white single crochet and two rows of the variegated single crochet for my border. I did my last stitch of single crochet and all I need to do is do a slip stitch and then I'm going to cut my yarn. I need. I want to cut a pretty good size tail there, maybe about eight inches or so. So I've got an eight inch tail at least. Now I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to pull that tail all the way through and take my tail and pull it tight. See what it looks like? You're just going to pull it snug and tight and that finishes off your work. I get to use my big yarn needles y'all. So get me one of those yarn needles out. I'm going to thread that needle. Okay, I've got my yarn needle threaded. And all I'm going to do is going to follow the direction of the stitches. And I'm going to just put my yarn needle right there in between those stitches on my row. See, you can't even see the needle there. And I'm going to push it through. Wow, this is just going so nice and neat with this big needle, y'all. It's going in so quick. I'm just going to go down a couple more stitches, pull it through, and then I'm going to come down to the next row and I'm going to come back the other way. Wow, it's so nice using this big yarn needle. <laughs> I'm getting so excited over this yarn needle. Anyway, I go down about maybe three or four more inches down this way, and then I'm going to just clip it off, and you're not even going to see that yarn tail inside that seam. It's going to look so good. I'm going to clip it off right here on the edge. Yay! Look at there. So excited. Aren't you excited? There, I've sewed it in. You can't even see it. 
Yay! We are done, y'all. We're done with our blanket. It looks so good. But if you enjoyed this video, if it helped you, please consider subscribing and liking and commenting down below. Most of all, I would love, love, love for you to go on Facebook, join the crochet group, the Crafty Yarn Barn, our crochet group. I have a link below for you. I would love for you to upload your pictures of your projects that you're working on. If you did this blanket, I would love to see what you've done and like to hear from you. Have a great, wonderful week. Be on the lookout for more videos to come. See you soon. Bye.